Well, one of the one of the biggest things that I see uh, with new producers starting out is uh, the worry about um, uh, mastering things and mastering plugins. Uh, it's much better to concentrate on the music I think that you're doing rather than actually worrying about what's going to go on the master channel to come out. We you know you can always add that sort of stuff later on or when when you're actually doing it, instead of trying to worry about um, what it's all going to sound like is to worry about getting the actual music into the computer first. That's uh, that's the most important thing for me, I think. Uh, somebody once said to me, you never actually finish a track, you just give up on it. <laughs> that's what somebody once said to me, and I've sort of applied that kind of thing pretty much. There's only so much time you can put on it. Um, I think if, 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 I, if I ever listen to anything I've done, very few things I've heard and actually said, yep, that sounds great. I'm still picking holes in it, even if I hear it, if I hear it on the radio or, or anything like that, I'm still picking holes in it and worrying about it. And I think you just have to learn just when to just stop and just say, you know what, I'm giving myself a deadline. This is going to be done now and uh, here and now, and, and, and that's it. I'm not going to go back to it again. You always have to remember that, that if you listen to something on loop over and over again, you start to get used to it. If you're excited about it when you first hear it, so that first 20 seconds, you're excited about that. When you first hear it, that sounds amazing. It still sounds amazing. It's just your head's got used to it. Your brain's got used to it. So best thing to do is to just take a break off it for 15, 20 minutes, go and have a listen to something else, and then come back to it again. Uh, and it will sound exciting. It will sound exciting again. And and uh, it just start to build the track. You no, know, start building it from sections, um, and uh, have that as your like I don't know main section. And then sort of start with building the drums up to it or something like that. But don't if once you've got the section there, if you just keep listening to it over and over and over again, you'll just get bored of it. That's a that's a tough one. There's so much stuff available now. A lot of it is uh, is already there. I, I would have said um, I, uh, like a live room plugin, but I was reading the other day somebody's now done that. They've actually now got a live room plugin that you can you get the sound of some. I can't remember what studio it is now. Some big studio over in America. There's some very famous studio, and they've they've modelled the live rooms in it. So I mean, people are doing all this stuff all the time. Um, probably if there was something that that uh, would be something I would really like to have would be a way, an easier way of getting analog stuff set and the actual going out to an analog and back in again in a way with no latency whatsoever. Um, but with all, so you could have all the total recall of a computer system, but with the older gear and stuff like that, that would be something I would like to see. But um, pretty much everything else, you know, you can get all your SSL models, you can get all your all your Neve models, you can get everything else is already out there. I don't really know what else there is you could you could you could wish for. Sometimes I have an idea uh, or or a melody or something like that, but I'll always start with the drums and the bass uh, and get a make sure make, that always makes sure you, you get a good groove section going. You get you get a good uh, rhythm section going. It's the same thing as if I was recording a live band. Even if you have the whole band playing together, you want to make sure you get the drums and the bass take g great because if you don't do that, then the rest of the sound is going to struggle around it. It's got to have a good rhythm, a good groove to it. So I'd always start with drums, bass, and then I would just play around with different sounds on top, stabby sounds or, 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 or whatever, pad sounds or something like that. I'll go over to a keyboard. I have all my... Um, external keyboard so I tend to go over there so I'm not continuously sitting in front of a computer I'll go over to one of those and I'll just start playing around with the sound on that fiddling around with it changing the sound on that and and until I find something that sounds great I'll do, the bass line I'll generally only do will just be a single note bass line over a 8 bar or 16 bar pattern just a single note it's the rhythm of it at that point in time I'm worrying about uh, the melody, the, the, if it changes or goes up and down, comes later. That, that's if I'm starting a track from scratch, they'll get make sure, as I say, the drums and bass are absolutely perfect, and then I'll play around with melodies and things on top of it, and then it kind of starts from there. I always have an eight-bar or sixteen-bar section right at the very front of Logic or Pro Tools or whatever it is, 
and then I'll once I've got that sounding pretty good I'll then start the track at about bar 16 or something like that I'll start the track there and then start laying it out and building the track across this across the screen but that first section there is always like uh, that's my uh, notepad if you like where I try the ideas out and then I'll put them into the track further over into it I'm gonna have to go to like my most favorite ever classic track if there's a track I ever wanted to um, produce which I produced myself um, it's going to sound quite a weird one um, but it would probably have to be um, Offshore by Chicane which is obviously before I started working with Chicane but uh, that was always one of my and still is one of my all time absolute favourite tracks um, and when I worked with Nick I, I uh, asked him a lot of questions about it um, and it, you know how it came up with the idea and the story was nowhere near as elaborate as I wanted it to be and exciting as I wanted it to be but it's still whenever I hear it it's just one of the most amazing pieces of music I've ever heard um, and it doesn't matter which version I listen to either it's just every time everything about it is just absolutely amazing it just reminds me of a particular time I suppose when when uh, that sort of sound was new and it was all happening and you know it was it's just a it's a it's a it's just an amazing track and I can't quite really put my finger on what it is um, but even even now knowing what I know about how the track was made as again not a lot of people ever get the chance to actually speak to the person that's made it and ask them how they did it yeah. and even now I know how it was done and it not being maybe as I say not quite such an impressive story as I would like it to be but um, it's still just you hear it you just say, oh it's just amazing absolutely incredible track probably probably a couple of bits actually um, one when I was doing a session years ago I was when I started out I was working in a very small studio in London uh, I was just like the house engineer um, and there was quite a few ideas I did a session with a guy called Marcus Drafts who actually happens to have now gone on to produce things like Coldplay and he was he was Brian Eno's engineer basically and and uh, I learned quite a lot of stuff we did like five days and I learned so much stuff just from him um, just things about you know when you're mixing stuff making sure that the frequencies don't clash on the low end stuff so it's, everything has a place everything is like a jigsaw uh, in the low end and high end so that everything has a has a place to fit um, and also even things like when you're feeding somebody um, headphone mixes don't just crank everything straight up if they can't hear something don't just turn it all up because if it all of a sudden comes in poor bloke at the other end you know but it's just it's just little things there. it's just so much stuff learned from that um, and also from when I was training uh, an engineer that I was training with uh, also said to me about working in different studios in different rooms uh, have a song that you know absolutely back to front inside out it can be your favourite track ever uh, it can be anything you like it, it's just you have to know it it's something that you haven't done it's something that's been done by somebody else uh, and um, wherever you go take it with you and play it through the speakers in that room so that you then you know that track so well but you haven't done it so your head's not in the parts of it you're not criticizing it or anything like that till you're listening to it you know the frequencies really well listen to it in that room and then you'll learn the room by doing that and learn that don't be worried about too much about the speakers that you're using um, it's more about the room that they're in and learning where the best place to sit in that room is because you can't change that you can you can you can't change that you know that's that's the sound of that particular room um, so you want to get the best out of it you can. I think the difference between a DJ and a producer uh, nowadays is not a great deal of difference. Um, in fact, it, it's probably uh, the, 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 the producer part of it has changed quite a lot, even in the time I've been, I've been um, working sort of from the mid 90s up until now, it's changed massively. You used to have uh, a producer and an engineer and an assistant engineer and then a tape op or a Pro Tools operator or whatever. And in some situations you still do that but most of the time now what you find is you have, especially in, in the sort of electronic music uh, area, is that 
the producer is the engineer is the programmer is is everything he's the you know he's the he's the synth programmer he's he's the he's the, the drum programmer all these different jobs are all done he's the mastering engineer he's the he's he's everything um and it, he's also the musician so if you're sitting there and you're on with your laptop or with your computer in in your studio or in your bedroom or wherever it is you produce you're you're all these people uh and a dj only ever really was a producer but a dj was just somebody who who knew the sound they liked because they played it out and they knew what sound worked so a producer was the, the job of a producer when i started was to guide the session to get to the correct the right sound at the end by knowing how to get to that point and telling the engineer how to get to that point well that's what a dj ever 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 is it's a, he's, a, he's a producer so dj and producer is the same thing effectively it's how you communicate with everybody else the thing that's different now is that you are the producer the engineer that as i say all these different jobs so you have to sort of separate it in your head into these different hats if you like wear different hats to do different parts of the job and um know where you are so if you're if you're a musician worry about the, the music you're working on don't worry about the sound of it and and that then become the engineer and worry about the sound of it and that sort of stuff i would say that's what the major differences are or were and how basically now you're all it's all one person i think it it can be but i think that's sometimes good that it's done that because it creates excitement in people and when people get excited about something they want to get better at it and that then that allows them to expand so programs having programs like garage band for instance you could do a track in garage band it comes with a whole stack of loops you drag a loop in drag another loop in and before you know it you've got a track but you haven't had to play any of the instruments or do anything like that but you think oh i've done this this track um and it gets you excited about it so then it makes people want to learn how to do more things with these instruments and that which is where it starts to expand i think it's what it's doing is it's making it easier for people to get into than it used to be where you used to, have to go and book a studio and you know the old stories about back in the 80s when people used to book fair lights because they heard the fair light was the thing to have in the studio and people used to turn up and say, right we've booked this fair light and they go okay who's going to program it go, what do you mean you have to program it you know nobody knew how to program these things but they didn't understand now you could have a mac with garage band on it and anybody can go in and make a make a track on it and then you could take it to somebody in a studio or somebody your friend who can play a piano on it or something like that and do the piano on it and that then gets you excited about it and makes you want to be able to do the piano yourself on it and so i think it's a i think it's a good thing i think the answer to the question is yes it has made it too easy but it's a good thing that it's made it too easy One twenty-six. Um. <laughs>